So we're back. This is another episode of Father Knows Something. This is the midnight release. And uh, I love the early v- ones that, you know, kind of chime in. The- I waited. I'm the first one to see it. I sometimes see those see those statements in the comments. They're so nice and sweet. Yeah. So I think we have a special show tonight. It is a rather unique show tonight. You've been uh, waiting weeks to do this show. Yeah, we've been trying to do it, but we're we're here. Okay. Uh, and subscribe, everybody, please. I think we have like, uh, ha- we might even reach our numbers if everyone would subscribe from all the viewers that haven't. That's true. So let's roll. Hit me with your story. That's all you got? That's no all- other life updates? Not a happy birthday, oh, Matt? Oh, wait a minute. Wait, you do. We have a whole bunch of stuff. First of all, we are going to start with happy birthday, Matt. So if everyone's watched the show and you've seen my son, Matt, Morgan's brother, uh, Justin's bud, uh, his birthday is today. So, birthday. And we just called and sang him happy birthday, and he's got a full day of doing dom- fatherly domestic ch- things at home. That's right. Uh, my week was uh, driving on the freeway and having my uh, timing belt of 10,000 miles go and devastate my engine, I believe. And so- Car is getting car, carted out. Car is uh, is on eBay. We'll see what it brings tomorrow. <laughs> we are waiting Everyone for- Everyone go bid on Jerry's car. <laughs> We're waiting to see what the car does on eBay. And by the time you hear this show, that eBay will be long done and gone. And uh, now I got to go back and uh, work on a different car that I have back in Minnesota and go spend some time with Taylor and be a mechanic. Nice. Do, do what dad does. Works in this fix-it shop. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So today's episode is all about updates, right? We are, we're going to give everyone like kind of a little rundown, a summary of what the story was and then the update from our writers. So it's all about kind of reconnecting and just sharing, sharing what, you know, what happened after our advice and what we said. Let's go. Let's dig in. Let's do it. Okay, so this first story we have is from episode 33. It's around the 45-minute mark. But episode 33 was Father Knows Parental Figures, which came out in August of 2022. Also, when I read that the first time, I thought I read April of 2022. So I was going to be like, this was a year ago. Oh. Um, my vision is clearly not very good today. My contacts, I think they're on their last leg. So this was a story where our writer wanted kids and her husband and her agreed on it years before they got married. They were on the same page, got married, and then the husband changed his mind after reading about people confessing their hatred of parenthood. And what about his wife? She still wanted kids. There's a problem. Yes. So the update. I wanted kids and he changed his mind. Hi, Jerry, Morgan, Justin, and Holly. I wrote previously regarding my husband and I's situation with wanting kids. To recap, we were together five years before being married, and before we were married, we had discussed having a family. After the marriage, he told me he no longer wanted children. After the shock of hearing my story and listening to outside advice, which I super appreciated, I reached out to our therapist, and she said she would listen, then brought it up with my husband. For anonymity, let's call him Benny. He listened, and he felt like he treated the whole thing like a joke. Benny and I went to counseling, and he explained how he actually really appreciated how harsh Jerry was getting with his views. However, his mind wasn't changing. Let me first clarify. I am very pro-choice. I have friends that swear to never have children, and I love that for them. It was never okay to go into a marriage after years of dating and change your mind about something so huge and expect me to be okay with it. I knew there was no compromise with something so big. I was being unrealistic, and I apologize. Children deserve to be loved unconditionally. The update, we're currently separated. For legal reasons, I will not go into too much detail. Roughly three days ago, Benny was arrested for domestic violence and destruction of property. I gave up. I turned him in. It took me almost eight years to realize I was trying to drive a car that never had enough gas to get where it needed to be. 
It's been a week for me and I'm not okay, but damn it, I will be fucking thriving eventually and I'm already on the first step. There are things I covered up for him for years and no one will ever know. I know that somehow I will always be the villain in someone's story and that is honestly none of my concern. I read the comments, Jerry. I listened to the episode several times and it was all things subconsciously I already knew. It will be a long time from now, but I will have my little family with little Filipino noses and a house cat and the cutest dog. I'll have someone that compliments me more than they'll comment on my weight. I'll have someone I can trust to love me the way I deserve to be loved, not manipulated, no longer suppressed from what I truly enjoy in life, free to be who I've always been. So thank you, Jerry. I still haven't told my own dad everything that I hid from him the past eight years, and I don't know if his heart or temper could handle it. To everyone that left comments, I read it all, and I so greatly appreciate the input. It will be a long road to recovery, but I am ready. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so proud of you, and your life is going to really start shining. The fact that you lived in a life of not for forget it with the fact that that he flipped on you about the baby i don't know if we even knew about all the abuse no was you, never mentioned you hid the abuse and the fact that you now brought that forward to yourself and said hey i'm not going to live my life with that that is the most uh greatest sign of strength and and that you have your shit together and you know and you're on the right trail you are on the right path now and i am Truly awaiting the the next writing where you said I met somebody else and look it's not going to happen overnight you're you're going to have to go through some healing time because even in a bad marriage there is grieving and all kinds of, of emotional stuff that you're going to go through but in time when you finally finish finish your work of being who you are without all the other yuck going on the divorce and all this other stuff you're going to you're going to fly. Your life is going to really really shine and I'm I'm so happy for you. Yeah. It sounds like there's a lot we don't know and I think the comment too like I'll have kids with like my Filipino nose and it's like it sounds like maybe that was like something he criticized her about and her weight as well. So you never should have a partner that just drags you constantly. I mean, that is so hard to well, deal with and so unfair. Well, and this is, I just, I love this because this is just so powerful. And I think, you know, update episodes every once in a while, just, it really shows the beauty of what all of us collectively are doing mm -hmm. in this little community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This shows, and I love the fact that she showed him, even though it didn't work necessarily, but I love that she showed him the episode. Mm -hmm. Like he's like, I, you know, Jerry was being tough on me and all this. It, it's just, you know, I know it's kind of a bad situation and now it's turning into something a lot more beautiful, but it just, I don't know, it's, it brings everything with the show full circle. Well, it, I just look at it that life, you know, we, we, we make these decisions in our life that take, up down, take us down different roads. And she said, look, I, I'm going down the, the wrong road. I'm, I'm going to back up and I'm going to go redirect. And wasn't afraid to do it. Mm -hmm. She did it, took that challenge. And, you know, I really do see that you're going to be so much happier. And it's amazing what happens in our life when we really get happy. Things and even, even every part of our essence and what we look like and what we feel like from inside out, it shines through. Yeah. So uh, congratulations. That's all I can tell you. Congratulations, congratulations, and one more. Yeah. Congratulations. They come in threes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rule of three. Okay, moving along. So this next one is an update to the fourth story on our Black Sheep episode, which was number 41, back from October 2022. And this story is about a writer who was... A little neurodivergent by the sounds of it. They got hyperfixations and were like really into certain things like Harry Potter, books, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, normal interests, but they they really liked those things. And it seemed like their family, every time they would try to talk about these things that they cared about, would laugh at them, mm -hmm. make fun of them, and kind of totally disregard them. 
Mm -hmm. and be like, oh, yeah, whatever. Okay. Leave the room. They would, yeah, they would be talking and family would get up and like leave the room in the middle Mm -hmm. of the conversation. So it seemed like our writer was like really not respected or cared about in this family dynamic. So especially what was important to that person. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it seems like they belittled them at every chance they got. So we have an update. Okay. Hi guys. Sorry for not writing in sooner, but I guess it's better late than never. To start, I have completely cut all contact with my dad and moved out of the state with my mom. My brother didn't move with us. I unfortunately can't move out currently as I am the one who takes care of my mom, who is a severe alcoholic, and I don't feel comfortable leaving her alone. But I am working on figuring out something that could hopefully get me out of this current situation. I also would have moved out earlier, but the price of living where I was previously was way out of my price range, especially since my bank account was completely controlled by my dad, who could easily take money out whenever he wanted, something that happened a lot and he was very against me moving out. But I'm working on getting my finances back in order, which can help me get out sooner. Unfortunately, the constant interruptions and disregard of my feelings and interests that my mom still has affect my life daily, but I like to think I've gotten to a point where I know that it's not my fault and that what I say has meaning. I really want to thank you both for your kind and supportive words. I've never heard someone say that my family is the one at fault, so it shocked me a bit when you both agreed on that fact. I've also never been compared to Kevin from Home Alone, but there's also a first for everything. Thank you for reading more of my ramblings. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. Anything else? I've been the one who looks after my mom since I was 13, which is why I'm not comfortable leaving. I'm now 20. It's just, you know, when you hear these stories and you know that they've made action to correct themselves, it's great to hear. Well, even just the internal of, I know what they're saying and their criticism of me doesn't matter. And Mm -hmm. I can't take it so to heart, Mm -hmm. which is very difficult when it's coming from close people in your life, such as family, Mm -hmm. but with the moving away and then not putting yourself in that toxic environment every day, Mm -hmm. eventually, you know, you're trying to also move out um, from your mom. But for now, it's a big change. And really just the, to be on the defensive and be able to say like, okay, you guys can have whatever opinions you want. doesn't affect me. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to find people that embrace who I am and love what I talk about Mm -hmm. and even talk more than me potentially. Yeah, I just like to see see the person um, find a way of getting their mother more, you know, uh, on their own and not keep pulling on, on, on their life for the rest of his life, for the rest of their life mm-hmm. to, to function because it's, it's an awful heavy load to keep carrying. And, you know, the person's 20 now and it's time for them to have their life yep. and be able to, to, to do all this stuff. So it's, there is something that has to be done here that they have to figure out as well on that one. And, it, and I know you can't just turn your mom, you know, your, your back on your mom, but you got it. You got to get it to a part where there's some assistance. Yeah. Where you have some freedom. Yeah, absolutely. This is, um, it's tough when you have family that rely on you and you feel that you have to be a caregiver and, you know, alcoholism is, is a really tough one. So I hope you can maybe create a better support circle for yourself and continue to branch out and find your people. I mean, I know Dungeons and Dragons just had a movie come out. There's kind of a a resurgence in it. I don't think it ever went away, but I think it's becoming like more mainstream popular. So maybe there's a group of that, like of Dungeons and Dragons friends you can join and hundred percent really connect with people that would appreciate you and not be the not be the Kevin anymore. Kevin, yeah. here, pass this to Kevin. Pass this to Kevin. <laughs> okay, Justin's got the next couple. Okay, up next. I'm with you. Isn't this fun? It is. It's you can finally, you know, it's like the cliffhanger. It's like the cliffhanger at the end of the episode. And you're like, oh, I got to click the next one. But we don't get that opportunity. Well, now we get to really hear on some of them, you know, what really did uh, happen after after they heard us and after they took their own interpretation of that. Yeah. Well, especially because we're always like, let us know. Well, yeah. here you go. They're letting us know. I know. Okay. Number three. 
This is from uh, the Just Go With It episode story three, uh, episode 23 from May of 22. That's almost a year ago. That's pretty crazy. Coming up on it. Yeah. We're almost in May. So yeah, almost a year. Okay. So this one was pretty short. So I'm just going to read the original. I'm 22 and getting ready to leave for university. I'm going to a university that is six hours away from where my parents live. I'm super excited to go, but I've been feeling a lot of doubt because my parents keep talking about how far away I'll be and how big this change is. I know they mean well, but these comments have torn away at my confidence. I just want them to support me in this decision. I'm on the autism spectrum and a few years ago fell into a bad depressive episode that my parents won't move on from. That's kind of the gist of what the write-in was that we addressed. Here's the update. Hello, Jerry, Morgan, and Justin. I'm writing you because I know you all love a good update. We do. Sure do. I wrote in a while back about having a hard time dealing with my parents not wanting me to move so far away for school, which was about 487 miles. After listening to your advice, I had a chat with my mom and we were able to come to an understanding though she and my dad were still apprehensive about me being so far away. What my parents didn't expect was that I would absolutely thrive at school. Not only did I thrive, but I've actually noticed I rarely experienced the constant anxiety I'd grown used to and haven't had an anxiety attack since coming to school. That's amazing. Even when I had gone home for the holidays, I found myself counting down the days to when I would be able to go back. Let's hope winter semester goes just as good or better than fall. And thank you to the Father Knows Something crew. So proud of you that you're that that you that you're flying on your own. You're you left the nest, you've created your own little birdhouse, and you're doing great. Yep. You get out in the morning, you fly around, you meet your all all your (laughs) new friends out in nature. And (laughs) yeah, I think this one just goes to show sometimes like we spend so much time worrying. Mm -hmm. And being so anxious about certain, which this is a big decision. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just kind of go with the flow and go in it. Because this, what was it? Just go with it. That was the episode title. And so you just go with it sometimes and turns out great. What it really does show here is sometimes, even though parents don't mean to be, they can be sometimes uh, disabling. Uh, especially when, when, when someone they're afraid of having that person make a mistake or have that, you know, their love, their child get hurt. They try to protect them, uh, from all this. You, you, you really can't, sometimes you have to let them go a certain amount and really stand back and bite your teeth and whatever you can to restrain yourself from stepping in to let them see that the fire will get hot and, you know, just find a to keep their finger out of the fire, you know, oh, it's getting warm. Well, now I know that it's in their own brain and they're going to grow and be just fine. So I'm very, very impressed. And I'm sure your parents are just delighted and their heart is warm to see your success. Yeah. And they're on their own. They're going to get this message that you'll be fine and you're going to continue to develop on your own without them overseeing and overwatching you. And you're going to be able to go through life all on your own without a, without any problem. So very proud of you. Great to hear. Yeah. And I think this is also a message for a lot of others out there who could be struggling with anxiety or depression. Like our brain is a muscle in the sense that what we do and what we repeat like gets solidified and that's Mm -hmm. neuroplasticity. Like whatever you're not using gets pruned and cut away. So all of these neural pathways that you're constantly in get strengthened. And so with anxiety and depression, the more you feel that way, the more you are in that state, your brain recognizes it as normal. Your brain solidifies those neural pathways. The best thing you can do when you're dealing with depression and anxiety, as tough as it is, is do something so different. You shock the system. Mm -hmm. You get out of the funk. Like you can't get up and clean your house. Get just get up and get outside. Get mm-hmm. moving. You you know you don't have to do the go paddleboarding. Do something different yeah. to get your brain out of that pathway. And so, I think this is a great example of why sometimes it's so good that you know change might be scary, but you got to change it up to to move forward yep. and and grow and, and heal to get a new reinforcement. I think is exactly. What you're saying. Yeah. Well, in this next one, uh, 
relates directly to the school thing again. This okay. is very similar. Okay. This story was where a writer absolutely did not want to go to college, but his parents were insistent. He was basically asking, do I suck it up and go to make them happy? Mm. From Back to School episode, uh, story two. Okay, okay. Hi. Okay. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> Hi. It's the young man who wasn't sure what he wanted to do, but didn't want to go to university. I decided it would be great to update because the winter semester, which I had enrolled in, has been in session for a month. I wanted to say I'm thriving. I look forward to working hard. I love learning in class lectures and being on top of my assignments feels so good. Hey. This isn't something I wanted, but I really see how this is something I definitely needed. I wanted to thank you all for your advice, especially Justin. The perspectives <laughs> just gave me so much to think about. No wonder why he picked the story. Yeah, he wanted, <laughs> he wanted the flex. All right, keep going. Sorry. The perspectives just gave me so much to think about. I'm in university for business and I couldn't be happier. So again, thank you for the advice. Fantastic. That's amazing. Which also shows like sometimes a decision you wouldn't make for yourself or like, I don't know. It's so interesting how like he went from, I don't really want to go to college at all. Like, do I suck it up to I'm thriving, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Like it just, it shows so much of like, if you set your mind to something, like you can do it. And, you know, sometimes reframing things in your head, like, I think I do this a lot where it's like, I really don't want to go out. I don't want to go exactly. out. It sounds miserable. It's the last thing I want to do. And then you go out with your friends and you're like, what was I well, panicking that was, for? That was a comparison I was going to give. It's like a trip pops up or mm -hmm. some random opportunity, a trip, something that takes you out of your normal routine. Yeah. An opportunity will pop up and your natural inclination, at least for for a lot of people, is, oh, man, I just want to stay inside. It just sounds so good to have the night off for once and relax. And and then you decide to go and you look back. You're like, oh, my God, I was thinking about not coming to this. Mm -hmm. But do you guys remember the story also about a year ago that uh, I, we had a ride in my cousin and he got offered a scholarship to go to law school. He was a teacher. He decided he wanted to get out of Chicago and he wanted to go back to, he got accepted to go to law school. He wanted to go to Northwestern. He was waiting to see if Northwestern would invite him. Yeah, he didn't get accepted to his first choice. That was Northwestern. And so the question was, do I wait to go to law school or do I take the school that I got in at and gave me an amazing opportunity? And a scholarship. Scholarship. And he ended up choosing to not wait for Northwestern. And he went to that school in Georgia, which well, wasn't ideal for him. Well, you don't know this, but I talked to him yesterday. I do. Oh, I know you talked to him a while ago, not yesterday though. I, I talked to him yesterday to see how it's going. He's loving it. And he is loving it. Loving he's, it. He said that he is, he's in the middle of his finals. He's going home for the summer. He's going to work in a law firm. Uh, and then he's going back. He, he absolutely so glad he, he, he took the direction. He thanked us, and he even called Jonathan, had a conversation with Jono, which oh, you good. guys have not met Jonathan, a nephew of mine who is very wise. And uh, it worked out great for him. And he says, look, I don't have an A average. I'm, I'm following the middle of my class. That's okay. But, but I'm loving it, and I am going to practice law, and I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. That's exciting. Well, and I think sometimes we have to put a little more faith in the universe. Like, sometimes these opportunities and a path we might not take are, you know, presented to us. And it can be so scary. I know I, I did not want to move out to LA. I cried about it every single day because I wanted to stay in Minnesota. I wanted to go to the University of Minnesota for grad school, but life gave me this path mm -hmm. and I took it. And it was, you know, it's insane what it has shaped up to be, but it, it just kind of goes to show like, it's okay to... Let go of the reins a little bit. Let the mm -hmm. universe take control. And it's wonderful. it works out well. And it's, it's just so wild. So on, on, so behalf, wild. Of, on behalf of us, on, on your story, Samson, congratulations. We're very pleased for you. And this friend, I love hearing your loving business. And it's so great to hear like all these success stories. It just makes it so much better. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so this next one is from episode 34, which is dating. It was story number two. 
I'm just going to kind of read it really fast. Uh, My 18 female boyfriend, 22 male, and I've been together for the better of six months now. I, I was new to town and got on a dating app just to meet some new people. We ended up hitting it off and have been together ever since. We just recently put a label on things. Kind of. Last week, we took a trip together and I met his parents for the first time. We had discussions of how he would introduce me and we both decided that he would introduce me as his girlfriend. Here's where my issue is. After the trip, I realized that I am so in love with him. While I am a serious, hopeless romantic, this comes as no surprise. Boyfriend, however, is the complete opposite. He's got some pretty serious commitment issues and always uses the term autonomous being, as if being in a relationship breaks your autonomy. I want to tell him how I feel, but knowing him, I'm so afraid I will lose him. I come from a bad history of toxic relationships, and this is my first healthy one, so I'm afraid I'll screw it up. I'm pretty sure we probably told her to go for it because that's the vibe I would give. So, update. Hi, Jerry, Justin, Morgan, and Holly. I have an update for you, and I'm needing some advice. Ooh. I think my story was featured on episode 34. It was. I was conflicted on whether or not I should have told my boyfriend that I was in love with him. Well, I'm happy to report that I mustered up the courage a few months later, and the feeling is mutual. We are very in love, and we are celebrating one year together in a few weeks. On to the issue. My boyfriend, 22 male, just got accepted into grad school a state away and asked me to move with him. The city we would move to is his hometown, and I grew up a couple of hours north, but I really don't have roots in the area besides a good friend that lives in the city we would move to. The original conversation was that this wasn't happening until August slash September of 2023. Well, boyfriend got accepted into grad school earlier than expected, and he is now having to be there in May. This is much sooner than expected and creates some issues. I live with my sister, and our lease ends in March. The city we currently live in is a college town, so it makes it very hard to find housing, especially at such awkward times of year. I can't afford to get my own place, and I don't want to screw my sister over. I have a cat, and I don't know where we would go for two months if I decided to go with my boyfriend in May. I'm very opposed to doing a long-distance relationship unless there are set-in-stone plans of me going down there at some point. I don't know what to do. We are very happy together, and we have a healthy relationship. I don't think it's fair to either of us to break up just for the sake of breaking up, The lease situation is stressing me out so much. I don't have friends I could stay with here. I can't move in with my boyfriend for those couple of months because animals aren't allowed at his apartment. I guess I could maybe have my cat stay with my sister if she finds a place and I could live with my parents. My parents' dogs aren't cat friendly, but I don't want to inflict too much change in Kitty's life in such a short period of time. So help me with this a second. Do I understand that he wants her to go move with her to his new graduate school town. It sounds like that, yes. And what am I wrong to assume that she'll be living with him? She doesn't have to get a different place? I think so. I think more of the question is like, do I stay in my town that I'm at where my sister is and, you know, whatever, or do I move? It's kind of like, I don't want to do long distance. So do I I stay? Do I go? Do I stay? And we have plans to do long distance and blah, 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 blah. It's... I, I think that you you have a couple thoughts to go with. Number one, you don't have to move the second he leaves. You can make, you can do an easy exit, which means if that if you got to write out. I mean, right now we're already in going to May, so this is already old. We, we need an update for this already. Yeah, so this yeah. is this is updated all. <laughs> but my answer is would have been if I heard this in March is hang out, write out the rest of the lease, make plans to move, let him go to the new place, get settled. You don't have to break up. You just have to look in in relationships. People every day are offered in that have been together for ten years get offered different jobs in different towns, and sometimes for a period of time they have to have multi dwellings in order to and have this long distance relationship to get it to to finally coincide where you exit this job, you get a new job, and you're able to move and that you able can be together. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to happen at the second. It, it can happen over a period of time. I just think it's similar to the original write-in where it's like, obviously there's a little more dynamic to it, but do I confess my love? Do I move? Well, if it is this what if that's going to 
drive you crazy going forward, then most of the time on the show, we say, yeah, go, go, for, go it. for it. Go for it. Because you don't know what can happen, which is kind of the theme of this update episode yeah. is go for it. You don't know what's going to happen. And mm-hmm. a lot of these are turning out so amazing. So I would say figure out the logistics of when, sure, but go try it. Yeah. Sure. And then you can come home. Like it's it's that simple, especially because if this is going to be this crazy heartbreak that sticks with you for years and then you constantly regret, oh, what if I just tried and gone out there and it's not too far away and I could still have this relationship back home and do all this, then Life I moves. would say try it and clear that what if so you don't have to deal with that going forward. If it doesn't work out, then you know. And yeah. now you're not sticking with that the rest of your life. Like, ah, oh, I should have done that. Life moves on. So my answer is grow with life, take the chance and go for it. If you're worried, if, if you're using the excuse that my sister and rent and this and that. But then, that is a big reality. Yes. Like I, that's having why, a roof over your head that, and you don't want to screw someone over either. That's why I said the lease is up in March. At that point in time, right out to the rest of the lease. If, if, if you have a job that's supporting you for that. I look. think the big issue too, though, was like her lease is up in March. He's not moving until May. Right. So she was kind of struggling with like, okay, well, what do I do for those two months? Do I live with my parents? Like, I can't live with him and I either need to resign a lease or like I'm I'm homeless for two months. Like, it's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And my advice to that would have been like, if you live in a college town or any town, really, like go and look for sublets and subleases. Mm-hmm. You can find a lot of times people that had to move and just need to like finish out their yep. lease. So, hey, here's three months of a sublet. And now, you do it that way. And what's the problem if she goes lives with her parents for the for a month or two? She's worried about the, the dogs. The cat. Yeah, the, the cat. cat that she has doesn't get along with the dogs or vice versa. And so, you know, that's a you solution though. I, I would just say work it out to to make... To, the, the bigger plan here is what is... Am I going to exit? Look at the big picture. Big picture. Am I yeah. going to exit or am, right. am I coming or am I staying? I right. mean, am I going or... You yeah. Know, and you, if you're making the, pl- the plan to go be with... The ch- the decision here is yes, I am going to be with my. I'm going to start a new life in a new town with my with with my best friend, my boyfriend, and we are going to meet new people together there, and we're yeah. going to have a whole new a whole new set of friends, and we're going to take this we're going to take this challenge. It's also it's so funny too where one of her like solutions was like, do we break up because like I don't want to do long distance. It's like if you're with someone that you love, you don't break up. Break up. <laughs> isn't like that's not an option like you break up because there's problems in your relationship like this is something where like this is not you versus him in the move it's like it's you guys together versus the move like yeah. that's the issue the housing so it's maybe, like maybe break up isn't a solution it's maybe, how are you going to deal with the housing issue maybe that's a telltale here that she's really not in love as she as she, as she suggests she is or she's just a I mean, nervous overthinker like some of us here and you know sometimes we catastrophize things where your first thing is like well he's moving and like well what do i do like d- does this mean where we have to break up like right. i think it's just kind of like your mind can kind of self-sabotage sometimes mm. but i think for a lot of us like if you love the person you're with and some bumps are getting in your way. Like it's not you versus that other person. It's you guys versus the problem. That's it. I'm I'm with you. Okay. Moving along. (laughs) This one is from episode 30, big life events. It was story number two. So this story is where our writer's mom had issue with her grandma. Okay. So it was the dad's mom. So, the mom's Mm mother-in-law and they've been at odds with each other for years, like just always fighting tensions high. And it really got bad when our writer's sister got married. They make movies about this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big problem. So there's still like, there's just so much resentment, but now our writer's sister is pregnant and planning a baby shower. Grandma approached her, the writer and said, she will not be coming to the baby shower because she doesn't want to get in the mom's way. This is the mom's first grandbaby. She doesn't want to, you know, create tension or issue on this baby shower day. But that's upsetting to the sister who is having the baby shower. Like it's her day. And so it was this whole thing of like, how does she handle it? Blah, 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 blah. The advice we gave from what I remember is 
your sister, whose baby shower it is, mm -hmm. needs to have a conversation with grandma and say, you know what? I want you there. Yeah. Like, this is about me, not my mom. Like, you need to come. Blah, 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 blah. So we have an update. Thank you so much, Jerry Morgan, for providing your thoughts on the situation. I shared the podcast with my sister, who was very excited as she knows Morgan from TikTok. <laughs> Classic. Oh, man. In the midst of this, my grandparents were moving from their house to an apartment, and that process moved very quickly. They were meant to bring something to my sisters, but since it wouldn't fit in the car, they canceled, even though they were also planning to go to lunch together. They did end up getting together again to talk about things. Hearing Jerry say that it was up to her, as the mother of the child, to have the discussion gave my sister the nudge she needed to initiate the conversation. My sister and her husband met our grandparents for lunch and talked through things, but our grandma still insisted that she would not come to the shower. Grandma reiterated that she didn't want to ruin the shower for our mother, and my sister felt slighted that her own baby shower was still about our mom. Despite reassurances that they could stay with her husband's family who adore her, she still did not feel comfortable going. My sister was also frustrated because they told her they would send a gift card and that wasn't very personal. She doesn't feel like their issues should be in the mix and upset that her solutions were shot down. After an additional conversation, my grandparents admitted that they were planning a small surprise shower for her once they got into their new apartment, which did make my sister feel better. They were all sick with COVID the weekend of the baby shower so they would not have been able to come even if they wanted to. We had a small shower two weeks ago to celebrate them, and I think they did make her feel good and supported more than she had been previously. Ideal outcome now? Now we just wait for him to arrive. He is due December 8th. Boom. Oh, how wonderful. Two days after our Taylor. Yeah. How about that? Day after Pearl Harbor anniversary. Uh, anything else? Both of us really appreciated how well Morgan understood the situation from our perspective and understood the attention of the writing. Hearing our mother being called a petty fucking witch was also very <laughs> validating. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I well, okay. I regret that a little bit, but like <laughs> Jerry's advice was also helpful because we don't have a father that really talks about these kind of things. Well, I'm glad. See, <laughs> see this is this is where Oh. I'm appreciated when I talk to. <laughs> You're always a pretty fucking witch. Petty fucking witch. I got to go back and watch that now. That's a good one. Oh, man. Anyways, I do I do <laughs> love the way that your grandparents saw the issues and they said, "Look, we're going to we're going to make our granddaughter feel great and we're going to just do this yeah. own little private thing. Yeah. We're not going to involve all the other drama and we're, and we're going to So they definitely thought outside, you know, the the issue and said we're going to find the solution and that was great. What, yeah. What wonderful people you <laughs> you got great grandparents. Well, Bravo. And more Bravo. More showers, the better. Like, as long as you're not the one planning things, hey, I'll take as many baby showers as you're going to give me. Yeah, these days you could have five weddings, five bachelorette parties. You said that people were having mu multiple bachelorette and bachelor parties the other day. And I'm like, I think that is crazy. I think we step it up, have multiple weddings. The same wedding, not like people have multiple weddings in their life to different people. But why don't we just have like 10 of them? We could. Just because. Mm -hmm. Same guest list. Oh, same guest list. Oh. Um, I like on this story, though, um, how the universe does its thing, comes in and says, well, I'm going to make this a non-argument anyway. You guys get COVID. Oh, poor grandma and grandpa. And then they're like, we can't come anyway. We're sick. But that just goes to show like, hey, good thing they were planning another mm -hmm. celebration uh, because they wouldn't have been able to make that one even if they wanted to. So. I don't think COVID is the universe. I think maybe I like know, the planning. I know. It's I think just, it, poor, it's just funny. I think the grandparents, the grandparents definitely had foresight and they were, they were great. I yeah. Love them. I love them. It is tough though. Like, and it just comes down to a point too. Like as you make your way through life, like there are situations in my life where I'm like, you guys all just need to be in the same room and get over yourselves. And you might come to that with your mom and grandma where you need to tell your mom like, Hey, guess what? Not about you, but, Today is not the day. Maybe uh, when the baby's born and you're in the hospital and mom and grandma both want to be there, you'll come across that. But mommy's got to sit down and shut the fuck up sometimes. And you just got to tell her, sit up, sit down. You did tell her. Shut up <laughs> or leave. 
Yeah, petty fucking witch. I should put that on a t-shirt. I like it. Very good. Okay, next one. Long game episode. Story five. This one was about our writer having dated her boyfriend for three and a half years and has been feeling anxious about the relationship and that she's ready to move forward and her boyfriend kind of brushes it off. When talking about moving in together, marriage, or children, the boyfriend will simply say it's too soon or it'll happen one day. Is this the one I cried on? <laughs> she told her boyfriend that she needs to make up his mind and that she can't keep waiting around for him. He also mentioned he hoped she would change her mind about kids and just be happy with their fur babies. That was the gist of, of yeah, what it was. Yeah, no, I remember this one now. Here's the update. I just heard my write-in on the Long Game episode, and I was so happy to hear your advice. I wanted to give an update and let you all know that in the few days after that conversation where I asked my boyfriend to make a decision for our relationship, he came to the conclusion that he does want to live with me. Hey. Corny, I know, and will be okay with whatever decision I make about having children down the line. Look at that. I also came to the conclusion that I'm not 100% sure if I want to have a child myself for my own reasons. We said we would, in a healthy way, bring up the topic every six months or so and see if we are ready to start trying yet. Same with marriage. In the meantime, we moved in together back in September and have loved every second of it. I truly believe that this has only made our relationship stronger. Thank you again for your advice, and I guess I predicted it since I already put it in action. I love it. I just I think it's great how we can we can give you know somebody that little extra support and it really helps them to take those directions. Yeah, or it just goes to show that, you know, even if we get to your you're writing a little after, you're you're all making decisions that are best for you. Mm -hmm. Usually on these updates, I'm like, you guys all just went with it. You made the decision that you were leaning towards or that was best or healthiest for you. And it's all coming together. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have one last one. One more. Woo this is from episode 30, which was big life events hey. and story one. Okay. This writer was wondering if they should invite their father to their wedding. Their concern was that she has already limited contact because he has broken trust time and time again. Mm -hmm. She simply just did not want him at the wedding and wanted to feel confident in that decision. Hello, Jerry, Justin, and Morgan. I wrote in a couple months ago asking if I should invite my father to my wedding. I'm writing to you all with an update. I followed my gut and decided against inviting my dad. And it turns out that my gut was right and he shouldn't have been there. The day before my wedding... My dad faked a heart attack to get a pity invite. Oh my God. Posted on Facebook and everything. How did I know it was fake? He said the doctor told him he had a 50% blockage. Yet they sent him home with some light pain meds and he went back to working out the very next day. He's a professional bodybuilder, so he works out like a madman, even owns his own gym. He also got caught up in his lies and started telling other people it was a stroke. In the end, I didn't miss him on my big day, and he proved that he wasn't worthy of being there. Oh, my God. Thank you all so much for the great advice, and I look forward to all the great advice to come. Additionally, my dad recently asked me to get dinner, and I accepted his invitation. While what he did was unfortunate, I'm still going to keep a window open if he wants to actually improve our relationship, just at arm's length for now until he proves he has improved. DM y'all pictures from my wedding because y'all were such a help in because y'all were such a help and in a way I think of y'all as family. Morgan's looking as, as I immediately speak. flew to my phone. I'm she like, let me see. She's looking for the pictures. It's really interesting. How many shows have we had total? How many episodes? I believe this will be 68. So 68, and we've run roughly about four stories a show. Four to five, yeah. Four to five. We got a lot of stories out there over the past years. That's true. And it's amazing as we're listening them to, again, where we have to think, gee, what, what story was that? And bring it back and what was our advice and, you know, how have we've changed in our thought process? It's interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's fun to go listen to episodes one and two. It's, it's a, a whole different experience. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, still the core of it's always been there. I just love how sometimes during the episodes you would always say, and if you want, play this for them. And I always thought in the back of my head, they're not going to pull, pull up the episode and play it for them. Sure enough, here in our updates, they do. I played this for my father. I played this for my sister. 
<laughs> and well, I, and I really did want them to play it, especially yeah. for their parents, because you know the one thing that you want is you want them, to, the parent, to 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 get out of their way to communicate with their with with right. their kids. That's that was my whole goal on this is to help parents communicate. Some of these parents are doomed, and your that's your, what I, but uh, I your say, calling is being the father figure. That's why your audience is right, what it but, is. But I just said that that the parents are more screwed up than than the kids. They're stuck in their ways, and you know. If they got to get out of their own way, and if yeah. you could help them get out of their way, you know, it, it would build these relationships, these family, and break some of these bad, you know, patterns. Uh, I think you you found your people. I can help you find them. I can't uh, find these pictures. Yeah. Well, okay. I can't find it in the Father Knows DMs. So please send it again. To I the Father see. Knows DMs. Yes. The Father Knows Something Instagram DM would be would be great. But those are the updates. Those are the updates. We're going to keep them coming too. I think um, the form, the Google form for the updates is going to be in the description of this episode. So if we have read your story and you have updates, go to that update form, yep. not the actual submission form, and send them our way. And if you can reference what episode it was in, that would be amazing. It helps us find it and come up with the recap. But I love the update episodes and we'll we'll keep doing those. Yeah. So we had a great day. Great day. Yeah. And this was fun. It was good. And we want to welcome and we want to thank all of you and welcome you back into our studio. Yeah. And Morgan's got some another studio that she's putting together. So we're going to have some more things going on. And uh, we look forward to you next week. And I'm going to be gone this week. So You're I don't know how here. we're going to pull off a show for next week, but we'll figure it out. It might be very different, very unique, but uh, either way, we're going to have it. And uh, we'll see you then. And if you want to jump in on uh, Patreon, we're going to do a Patreon story. And we welcome you to come join us at Patreon. Yes. So uh, bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.